Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here, and we're going to uh, begin the first of uh, several uh, in a series of preview articles for the upcoming winter of 2016-2017. Uh, I thought I'd review um, a couple of things and also uh, just uh, point out that this will explain, uh, help explain a lot on the uh, posted weather piece on my website, meteorologistjoechaffee.com. Um, so uh, let's uh, look at this is last year's uh, winter total snowfall. And uh, you'll notice uh, that it, it was quite lacking in a number of areas, the darker blues uh, indicating uh, 24 inches or less. And this become these and even 12 inches or less coming in areas that normally uh, exceed 40 to 50 inches on a given winter. Uh, part, northeastern Pennsylvania and, and parts of southern and south central New York, uh, it actually increased uh, to uh, 24 to in some cases 48 inches or more across Long Island, uh, which hit 50 or more inches uh, for its uh, fourth consecutive winter. Uh, and Long Island averages about 30 to 32 inches, depending on where you are, a little bit more to the east, a little bit less to the west. But uh, this snow profile came uh, in, an, in, an El, in a super El Nino year, and also the bulk of the snow that fell down in coastal areas in, uh, from Virginia uh, up northward uh, through uh, southern New England, extreme uh, southwestern New England, came during that one blizzard. Uh, so 90, 90 to 95 percent of the snowfall for a lot of this area came all out of one storm, and that's sometimes how it happens. But I just want to uh, start going over a few things because you know you try to look for clues and try to get extract some meaning out of those clues, which is a little difficult uh, sometimes. But one of the things that's happened, uh, we're looking at um, water temperatures here across uh, the globe, and the uh, La Nina uh, that was forecast to develop, uh, the Weather Service has now canceled its quote-unquote La Nina watch. Um, we do have a, a complete reversal of last year where there was super above normal water temperatures uh, across much of the equatorial Pacific has now gone to uh, below normal by uh, one to two degrees uh, throughout uh, all along the equator with some po fewer pockets as you go uh, to the east. But the more significant change, what was happening in the northern Pacific uh, throughout much of the spring and summer was a very large cooling of water that had developed and actually spread uh, into uh, the Gulf of Alaska, which is very, very important. Uh, but that has completely reversed uh, in the last month. And now we're back to having very warm water in the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, then this is um, significant because um, this could provide impetus for a big ridge to develop in the western states, which is a way of funneling down cold air uh, into the United States. Here's a closer look of the water temperatures in the um, equatorial Pacific and south of Hawaii. And you have to remember this whole area here last year had water temperatures running uh, almost uh, four and five degrees uh, above normal, which is extremely high, uh, ex an extremely high departure. We have above normal water temperatures closer to the Hawaiian Islands, and we've already seen a couple of hurricanes track near the islands uh, in the last several months. But down near the equator, uh, the water temperatures are uh, cooler. Now, another thing that's happened in the east, and this is something that's focused on uh, by, by some, uh, water temperatures in the east, which have been running somewhat above normal, uh, especially up our way. But this is the uh, change in the last seven days, thanks to Tropical Storm Hermine, uh, which uh, sat out here for a few days and upwelled all the water. So we've seen some uh, large water temperature changes in the last week on the order of three to f uh, three to five degree changes uh, all up and down the coast from southern New England down to eastern North Carolina. Now, what that has done is it has somewhat corrected the uh, area of above normal temperatures and it even produced a few pockets of below normal temperatures here. Uh, I honestly think that it's a little overstated because, you know, folks will point out and say, well, the warm water there in the wintertime will energize storms. Well, the takeaway on that is that the warm water also um, warms up the coast and would uh, argue for, you know, changes to rain, especially in weather systems early on in the season. So it's kind of a trade-off. Plus, you could have all the warm water in the world, but if you don't have the upper dynamics to go with it, um, 
it's not going to mean anything. So I just want to, you know, make those points out uh, as we are going to, over the next number of weeks, I will be putting out several pieces uh, regarding the upcoming winter. I, I'm not good at making definitive statements with regards to the long range. So we're just going to try and pick up some clues and see where it all goes and, um, you know, have fun with it, I guess, because I know a lot of you folks are snow lovers and a lot of you folks want to see another winter. But I, I just want to point out, at least for Long Island, you know, it's four winters in a row of 50 inches plus. Uh, so you're going for, which has never happened, by the way. Now you're going for five, which is uh, really never, never happened. And also going for eight out of nine winters of above normal snowfall. That has never happened. So you really are pushing the edge here of the statistical limits. You're at the very, very top of the scale. So, you know, if we wind up with an above normal winter and take out those two events, uh, it would be um, quite, quite unusual.